What's up, my friends? Welcome back to our blind Let's Play of The Witcher 2. We're here with Geralt and the rest of our merry bunch, our friends here, Zolt and Dandelion, Roach and Triss, and we're at the inn here in Blotsam. And we kind of need to touch base with our friends here, but color me trade. I kind of just want to explore the area first. I want to go around clicking on some people because I don't know if it's going to trigger cutscenes with our friends. And I kind of want to touch base with people around here and see what the hell kind of trouble we can start. Side trouble, I guess, because I guarantee you talking to our companions here will... Look at them, they're all sleeping. Get your bum asses up. Look at them. <laughs> I don't know if it's going to trigger a cutscene, but before we do all that, let's jump in the journal. Um, Let's see, we have... Necker contract on board here. In spite of events, Geralt had not forgotten his profession. Witchering was his prime source of income. So when he learned that the Flotsam authorities had posted a bounty for exterminating Neckers, he accepted the job immediately before he began. He decided to learn more about the vicious creatures. He began looking for books about Neckers and searching for creatures to observe their behavior. So we need to go look for books, friends. And I believe that bounty board outside said something about a... Somebody, a, a barber. And then he also is a bookseller. So I believe he's somewheres out in the town somewheres. And then we have Andregas. And dragons were multiplying in the Flotsam area. The monsters had become such a scourge that Bernard Laredo, though stingy by nature, posted a bounty for extermination. The Witcher accepted the job and decided that little theoretical preparation might pay off. Reading about Andraga Havis would be worth it. And then we have something about a troll here, which killed me intrigued because, you know, not all trolls are... From my knowledge on trolls, they're kind of sapient in a way. So that one should be very interesting. I have a feeling it's going to be something on the lines of decisions being made there. And not just going off and killing them. Because Neckers and Dragos are pretty much mindless killing machines. I don't believe trolls are, friends. In practicing their trade, witchers abide by a code that clearly explains that they can and cannot do. Geralt claims he invented this code himself, which he did, friends. It's his own code. To have an excuse for refusing unwanted jobs, but I think such a stratagem would be too complicated for him. Either way, Geralt noticed that Bernardo Laredo had posted a bounty on the head of a troll living in the area. Because a troll is a sapient creature, it falls under the code as huntable only if evil. The curious witcher decided to check it out. So we have that. We have interesting stuff here. We did read about Lava Black Castle. Let's read about Flotsam. Flotsam, a river port and trading post. Lies along the upper course of the Pontar among an accessible force in the valley that bears the river's name. Numerous trade routes meet here and Tamarian Adernian borders is located nearby. Land travel in the region was Erdius and dangerous for Scoito units prowl the woods. However, as they say, elves like cats are shy of water. So most travelers and merchants choose to sail the river. Flat bottom barges, punts, scows, and even seagoing cogs visited the harbor. Ferrying goods between Edern, Kedwin, Tamaria, Redania, and Sidaris on the seashore. No wonder then that this occasionally small outpost was a rival economic importance. He who controlled it drew immense profit from the trade. At the start of our story, Flotsam belonged to Tamaria, and its small garrison was tasked with enforcing the law and providing protection from the river pirates. Scoyatel units and monsters inhabit the surrounding forests. So that's enough reading for now. Let's get to it. We will read, try to read the end of episodes. Like we have these books, friends, that I really need. Look, look how many books I got. We have a good deal of books. Um, yeah, our inventory is looking very small. I went ahead and did as much looting as I can without triggering stuff, at least in the end here. 
and I noticed down below there is a storage chest so yeah and that's the reason why you I'm so intrigued to go ahead and click on people because there was a lot of shit going on here who wants more beer all right let's see she's a merchant here welcome let's just click on anybody look strong care for the little contest you want to throw the fuck down oh yeah baby here we go I'm gonna rip his goddamn arm off and beat him with it. Hell yeah, look at Zoltan and Roach in the background. So I kind of figured that it would have a bunch of mini games here in the bar, and I kind of wanted to get it get them going. Because if it's anything like the ends in uh, the first game, there is fighting and dice usually Too in them. strong for me. Here's what you're owed. You ought to give Wiry Wilkes a shot. Ah, busted your ass. Defeat Wiley Wilkes at arm wrestling. Oh, so we got a quest called Bring It On Flotsam. Who? Where's Wiley Wilkes? There you are. You'll not have an easy time with me. Look at your arms. You look like you got freaking tree branches for arms, pal. Oh, yeah, look at Roach. He's cheering me on. Hell yeah, Roach. Why don't you get your puny ass down here and arm wrestle too, pal? So arm wrestling is interesting, friends. I wonder if it's an added thing here or if it's taking the place of like uh, fist fighting. Strongman, you are. Here's your coin. You should take on Big Max. I'm a whoop Big Max's ass. Defeat Big Max at arm wrestling. What's up, Big Max? You're a strong lad, but I'm no wimp either. Wanna take me on? Hell yeah. One way to make money, friends. I made a lot of money by selling that over in burden shit that I had going on there. My goal is to never get over in burden like that again, friends. Like, it's so interesting because there wasn't a cutoff, and I didn't realize it at the time. By Veo Patis's balls, you're strong. You're winnings. There's someone else. No one's beaten him yet. Who? Bartholomew Bargy. You'll find him in the village. Bartholomew Bargy. Find and challenge Bartholomew Bargy to an arm wrestling match. Interesting. Um, no, what I was saying is that I didn't notice it at the time, but you can literally be so over and burdened in this game, you can just keep looting and looting and looting. There's no cutoff. Most other games that I have played, it's um there's like a cutoff to where you just won't be able to pick up any gear. Say something. Or did you just fart? That was definitely a fart. Let's go down here. Our goal is to... I'm going to go ahead and do a lot of the uh, looting and stuff off camera. If there, if I stumble upon a room or something that does have um, somebody in it that is of importance, I will go ahead and just... Um, try to get it into uh, the video next time we come in or something i don't know but we'll do a lot of uh looting and stuff off camera because that shit was too much friends i don't want to get over and burden like that again that was crazy and if stuff is not that useful then we'll uh, see how it goes when we do it like what's down here anything good who are you uh, yes wanna dance white teddy hell yeah let's dance buddy freak 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 It's probably nothing down here, friends. We have seen forgive us. Do my eyes deceive me, or are you Witcher Geralt? What can I do for you? My cousin from Vizima claims you're good at dice. I can play. If word gets out that we've a good contender, better players are likely to show up, and the stakes will rise. Maybe even the Vina Gausser or Sendler would look in on us. So, will you play? Enor Gausel? That sounds like an, the name of that barber that I need to find. I need to find him and I need to find his damn books. In case we want to go ahead and do them uh, contracts. Alright, let's roll some dice sure. then. Great. We only play for fun, but Zindrab fancies himself a master. I won't play any old challenger. Show us what you can do and who knows, I might sit down with you. I'm about to whoop your ass. Play Bednik. Go ahead and whoop his ass, friends. 
Indeed, I went ahead and fixed the whole freaking dice mod because that mod, whatever the hell it was, the texture thing was just ridiculous. To roll the dice, move your mouse to grant. All right, let's just toss them down. Holy fucking moly. I just got five. What is that? Yeah, three. it looks like threes. One, two, three. Yeah, I just got five threes. I ain't rolling anything again. You better fold, pal. Busted your ass. So is this one round here? Great. You win. <laughs> oh my god. Cool, friends. So which one did I play? Defeat another poker. So poker face Blossom. So the guy with the hat on is the champion Care here or something? Some dice? Hell yeah, let's fucking throw down, pal. Five threes, friends. Oh my god. I'm thinking that like maybe taking the dice and it's dropping them is the best way to do it here. Look at that. Look at these hands. <laughs> maybe our luck is upgraded in this game compared to the first. I don't want to jinx it because we may start getting our ass whooped. Hell yeah, baby. See ya. Your luck was in. But I want a chance to win my coin back. You ain't getting no Punch damn chance, pal. Out! Defeat Burglar. Come here. What do you want? I'm about to whoop your ass at dice. Care for a game of dice? Shall we roll a few rounds? Hell yeah, friend. Let's roll. I honestly like the dice better in this game than the first, friends. <laughs> I like that it's just one round. So we got two, hold on, let's see if we can figure these numbers out. So this is a one, obviously. I get these things because it's got a one here, a two there. That is four. Or is that five? No, that's four. I thought, wait, I thought, I thought the I before the V was four, not the, this is six, isn't it? Yeah, that's six. So two sixes. Go ahead and re-roll. What does he got going on? He's got something. Oh, we got three sixes, friends. Say ya. Uh, whoop them. You won. Care for a rematch? No. Try Ina Gorzel from the Craftsman's District. Beat him and who knows? Maybe even Sendler will agree to play you. Thanks. Hell yes. Defeat Einar Gosel at Dice Poker. Good, because that's going to let me probably find him, friends. So this is obviously fighting here. Oh, we got a bunch of stuff here. Only the gods may obey. I can make no sense of this relic I have been entrusted. The gods have not granted me understanding of it. Perhaps Providence grants you luck. And then I shall give you this prize. Perhaps you will make better use of it. Okay. Rolling more dice? I don't know what the hell this is. Sure, let's roll more dice, pal. We playing dice here with a priest or something, friends? So we got two fives, and that's about it. What does he got? He's got two twos. Ona has resigned. Gee, thanks, pal. You are lucky, traveler, but not enough. It does not look as though the gods decree that you should bear up my burden. We have sinned, forgive us. What was that? What's going on here? A competition, brother. With the port closed, we're bored off our asses. Care to take part? What are the rules? The contenders put their coin down, winner takes all. The fighting rules. Drop your opponent and make sure he stays down. Complicated. So, are you fighting, brother? Hell yeah, I'm whooping some ass. Remind me of the rules again? What are the rules? The contenders put their coin down, winner takes all. The fighting rules. Drop your opponent and make... Complicated. So? Yeah, yeah, come on, let's do it. Oh yeah. He's a fresher like you, brother. Good for starters. Put your coin down. So, what'll it be? Let's fucking throw down. 
Get on with it there. I'm ready. Gentlemen, let the dance begin. Left hook. Watch out for the left hook. Oh, shit. Wrong button. I was trying to read the quest there. So we indeed have a quest for fighting, poker, and arm wrestling, friends. Oh, shit. Wait till he drops his fucking guard. So they did not get rid of fighting or arm wrestling. They just added another one. Good thing dice poker seems to be easier in this game. Wouldn't want to get on your bad side. Up for another, brother. Hell yeah. Who else am I going to make into mincemeat here? Who's up next? Cor Bransel, known as Flippass. Strange name. Does everything backwards. Sleeps in daytime, drinks before he eats, and tells women to get dressed before he plows them. Flippass. Show us your orans. So what'll it be? Hell yeah, friends. Look at all the money we got so far. That's from all the over and burden bullshit that I looted. <laughs> I'm ready. Gentlemen, let the dance begin. Punch I guess it was kind of worth out. it a little bit. Come on, oof. Oh yeah, friends. I'm getting the hang of this. This fighting is so much easier than the first Punch game. Just lights out. See ya. Uh, it's almost impossible to lose this, I think. Hey, champ. What? I can tell you're a serious contender. Far too good for this drunken riffraff. Believe you me, I know what I'm talking about. So? I don't know you. They call me King Ziggy because I pay like a king. If you want a taste of fame and riches, look for me by the inn in the evenings. I'll take you to the right place. That was fucking poetry. Up for another, brother. Hell yeah, give me more. Who's up next? I knew you'd end up fighting each other. Who's that? Tidy Tib. The bastard eats honey straight from the hive, drinks for four, and some say he can hang a bucket full of water from his cock. You better get a solid coin pouch ready. So what'll it be? He can hang a bucket full of water from his junk, huh? Ouch. I'm ready. Gentlemen, let the dance begin. So we got a quest called Fight Club. Meet Ziggy at somewheres. In the kidneys. Oh yeah. Come on, Tiny Tib. See ya. Goodbye. In the kidneys. Wouldn't want to get on your bad side. Congratulations. You dropped some of the toughest brawlers. Well done. Tournament's over. Bunch of goddamn clubs, friends. Didn't even break a damn sweat. See ya. Left hook. Watch out for the left hook. We have all types of quests. Bring it on, Flotsam. Oh, jeez. Find and challenge Bartholomew Baji to an arm wrestling match. Let's see. Though it was perhaps one of the last celebrated episodes in the Witcher's career. Know that while in Flotsam, Garrett managed to best Skinny Sten with the most modest achievement under his belt, he could face Wiry Wilkes. It did not take long for Wiry Wilkes, the man seemed woven of snooze alone. To bow to the strength of the Witcher's arm, now it was Big Max's turn. Big Max strained and wheezed, but the Witcher proved stronger. Arm wrestler, one more opponent, and the strongest of them all. This was Bartholomew Bargy of the village of Labadin. Well, I want to read about Fight Club here. These ones seem to be... Don't really matter. King Ziggy, a man of noble birth who was surrounding himself with men of despicable status, took note of Geralt's fist-fighting success. He offered him a chance to participate in another tournament. These were supposed to be fights for specially selected men. The participants' glory and reward would be guaranteed. Ziggy tended to appear in front of the inn at the evenings and it was there that Geralt met him again. All right, so we have these ones. We'll read them a bit later. Don't need to read it all right now, friends. 
Ever heard of doing it witch and trigger style? <laughs> no, tell me. He downs the flat, tries to get it on, falls fast asleep, and she wakes up a virgin in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Need a distraction, white one. Oh, all in, baby. I could use one. Oh, hell yeah. Come on, let's bargain. Are we paying for a horse in here, friends? Let's uh, let's bargain. How about 130, baby? Hell yeah! Close your eyes, friends. You don't want to see this, or maybe you do. Well now. Holy moly. Well, they definitely upgraded the cards, friends. Holy shit. What the hell did we just get into? <laughs> Where the hell are we at now? Holy moly, I didn't really expect that. This game is vulgar. It's freaking awesome. I'm gonna dive into all these women here. Remind me. Which one was Probably. this Voltest they killed? Maybe later, though. <laughs> oh my god, friends. This game is ridiculous. That one today. Holy shit. A lot of stuff in here, friends. Margot's notes. Let's go ahead and read that, shall we? Margot's notes. I don't like that sorceress at all. All female mages put on airs and smell of bitchiness, but this one is evidently up to something. It's clear she's not after the coin as she's pitting people against others as if they were toys. She suspect me of spying. If it's true that sorceress can read minds, I must be wary. Were my collusions with the Scoyatel to be revealed, I would rather off myself than suffer in Laredo's skull. So Margot is a spy for the Scoyatel? Who is she talking about, Triss? What the f hell, friends? This Mar- oh, this is the Margot lady. Yeah, I knew this name sounded familiar. She's from the, uh... Greetings. What can I get you, fine lad? She's from the hanging thing. She took our side out there. Interesting. What do you think of the Commandant? Mr. Laredo is a great man. A great man. He looks after us, helping, like... Taxes are just as they should be. We're all pleased. He governs the trading post and we're all perfectly happy here. Uh, yeah. What are you talking about, woman? Feeling all right? The town's a dump. Laredo's robbing you and his men intimidate everyone. That's foolishness, Master Witcher. Shouldn't say that. Shouldn't badmouth the Commandant. He's a holy man. Period. You fear him that much? Don't you provoke me. Beat it! Say ya. Yeah. Interesting. So people are afraid of Laredo here? Wow. So what is she? She must be the Madame. I'm pretty sure she's probably the head lady here. Well, ladies, Geralt of Rivia, we have to, have to go. So you ladies, uh, well, I guess we'll come back for you some other time, huh? He downs the flat, tries to get it on, falls back to the fleet. Look at that, people! So, this game incorporated going to the brothels and actually partaking in the festivities, friends. <laughs> I'm sure we could probably go ahead and click on all them women in there, huh? How cool! Let's go ahead and talk to our boys here. Let's talk to Triss first. Excuse me! How's it living with Roach's soldiers? Splendid. I know every shit joke that anyone's ever thought up. Plus, I've learned how to burp out the official title of the Emperor of Nilfgaard without reaching for beer. Shorty's told me about his 16 children, all named after Temerian troop divisions. And I know his nickname has nothing to do with his manhood. Nice to know that you care, though. Glad to see you in a good mood. I think I actually like them. They're good people. One of them even proposed to me. Who's the brave man? <laughs> Sorry, that's a secret. And here I thought Roach's boys had an ounce of respect for me. 
Not that we just didn't partake in some sexual intercourse, Triss. That it really wouldn't matter if somebody did propose to her, you know? Geralt's a dog, friends! So we answered this. Oh, interesting. The massacre in Rivia. It came back to me, I remember. The angry mob murdering non-humans. A young boy with a pitchfork. Anything else? Death. Or a state close to it. I'm not sure. I felt life draining out of me. Uh, I was there. I arrived a moment later. Too late. Don't worry, Triss. They're only memories. We have bigger problems to tackle now. Something tells me that in recovering my memory, I'll find out a lot about what we're dealing with now. Damn right. I can't wait till he actually uh, finds his memory back. And interesting enough, when he, if, if and when he gets his memory, I'm wondering how I'm going to RP this because technically I don't want to do it like the books, but it should be interesting because Geralt will finally get all of his memory back, friends. And I wonder how it would change him as a person, how his persona is that comes off in the games you know what i mean it should be very well, interesting I'll be... what do you want about pal <sighs> can we talk the roach oh we can only talk the zoltan here that's a dog's life get out i'll tell you that much okay <laughs> damn that was close in keep vodka tris merigold Lice eat me, but you are a treat to behold. Uh, just a little pale. Magic takes its toll, but I'll be all right. Good to see you in your beard again. Can somebody tell me what happened? You set off a month ago for Zoltan's wedding. That got fucked. There will be no wedding. Did you hear about Foltest? Rumors travel faster than the wind. Winds and rumors. I want to know the truth. I want to know how Foltest died. And the dragon, was there really one there? And who rules Temeria now? Dandelion, calm down. You'll choke on your liquor. <laughs> Dandelion is getting flustered here. So we have the wedding. Oh, Zoltan. Yeah, he was supposed to marry um, the Breckenrig person, remember? He told us that little story in the first game. No wedding, Zoltan. The Bregan Riggs broke off the engagement because some limp prick put it about that I joined the uprising in Vizima. My would-be popper law refused to let a rebel firebrand join the family. Enkeep, where's our drink? It was like this. We got to Mahakam a week after the Grand Master died. Bought Zoltan an absolutely grand doublet, a pair of Garibaldi Krakows, and as a gift for Eudora, a jade stone as big as my fist. We were broke as a joke by the time Dandelion threw me a bachelor party at an establishment called the Tight Lane. Next day, we went over to the Breckenrigs. They welcomed us in, sat us down, and proceeded to discuss the superiority of Mahakaman mining know-how over any other. And that went on until dinner. Just when I thought I'd learned more than I ever wanted to know about mining, they served the soup. You could have held a pen drop. Old Breckenrig rose and he says, A real dwarf works a mine. Not chase his fame on the battlefield. You'll never believe this, Geralt, but they served duck blood soup. It was as black as tar. They must have dropped lumps of coal into the pot. Eat, Breckenrick says, then proceeded to slop two full balls of the shite. Old goat. Hope his mind caves in on his head. <laughs> My man Zoltan's hands are bigger than his fucking body, friends. Are you seeing this shit? <laughs> Holy moly. So, in a sense, Sultan did join the Skoya's Hill, friends. He did join the Uprising in the first game, remember? Kinda? Did he? I mean, he kinda did in a sense, or maybe he didn't join the Skoya's Hill per se, but he did at least help non-humans. I mean, that's a given. Why the hell wouldn't he, you know? With all the shit that went down in the first game, but... Lorido said you're working with the Skoya Tell, Sultan. I have done many things in my life, get out. But I have never stooped to banditry. The Scoyatel don't consider themselves bandits. But I am no Scoyatel. Since when have you worked for Roach? Hey, nobody said a word when you went out to save Temeria from the Grand Master and his mutants. Relax, Dandelion. I was just asking. Do what you want. You're an adult, kind of. <laughs> that wasn't very supportive. Laugh away. At least I decided to do something constructive. 
You used to spy for Redania, now you're spying for Temeria. Some might call you a traitor. Ever tried to live off of poetry alone? The truth is, I'm a citizen of the world. As long as I don't serve Emperor Emir, I'm not doing any harm. Even be, Geralt. You play the spy a bit, get bored and drop it. You know how he is. The dragon... well, the dragon appeared and that's all I know. But where did the Lavalettes get a dragon? We heard it fought on their side, huge as a barn, they say. Dragons don't usually take sides. Maybe its lair was nearby and it just felt threatened. If you hadn't driven it off, Foltus might not have taken the castle. Maybe. We'll never know for sure. Triss, you're the expert on Temeria. Tell us who's in charge now. It's chaotic and getting worse. The old families are fighting for supremacy, no holds barred. Baron Kimbolt and Count Merivel, I bet. Among others. After the assassination, while Geralt was in the dungeon, the lords convened in a field near Lavalette Castle to choose a new ruler. Three days they debated, and it looked more like a bazaar than a meeting of nobles. Except the trade was in court and ministry positions, spheres of influence, royal privileges. Ha! <laughs> Humans! In spite of several duels and two poisonings, no king was chosen. Civil war was in the air. Christ, friends. It doesn't look good for Tamaria here. That's for damn sure. One thing I must say, I know this is off topic, but this is just so cool, friends. How we are all just sitting here as friends, talking via like cutscene, kinda. And uh, picking things to talk about as we go. This is so freaking cool. It is so awesome. Did they ultimately resolve anything? No. It ended as usual. Sadly, John Natalis remains our only hope. Ah. The victor at Brenna, and Foltest's most tried and true field commander. Hmm. And during the deliberations, he was several days' march from Lavalette Lambs, with an additional 2,000 armed men in tow. He's to keep the peace until a rightful monarch is chosen. He could find that ruling is to his liking. Natalis is a soldier at heart. He's not suited to rule, and I don't believe he even wants to. He's got the army behind him. Which is why he can guarantee peace. Well, a tenuous one, sure, but that's always better than civil war. Besides which, he's deeply in debt to a dwarven bank in which Philippa Eilhart as sorceress holds a significant stake. Oh, God. So Natalis was a, a hero at Brenna, I'm pretty sure. From the little bits that we know from the books. Interesting enough, he probably would be best for Tamaria, I guess, since he was considered a hero, friends. But if he's indebted to this bank or whatever that Philip Alhart is in control of, then yeah. She's gonna... I don't even know. She's so shady. I could see her probably using this guy then. In a way. I, I don't know. These sorceresses, man, some of them are just so shady. I mean, honestly, the ones I only really... The one, the ones literally I only trust are literally Triss and Yennefer. All the rest of them, I just don't really know how I feel about them. There were some decent ones in the uh, lodge. The blonde lady, what the hell is her name? Margarita? She was a kind of a cool one as well. Anyways. Where were the mages? Hi. Where were the gray eminences of this world when they were truly needed? They weren't invited. Neither was I. But if not for their intervention, or rather that of a few influential sorceresses, Baron Kimball would have taken the throne. I was invited to sing at his court once. Afterwards, he refused to pay me, and the food was awful. No way I'll stay in Temeria if he's crowned. I think I've heard enough about politics. Foltest killer lay in wait in the tower, where the Lavalettes had hidden the royal bastards. He was well informed. Wait a minute. What were you doing there? I was protecting the king. After the first attempt, Foltest began treating me as his lucky charm. He ordered me to be at his side during the battle. The dragon separated us from the rest of the army. The killer disguised himself as a monk, a blind one at that. He let Foltest greet his children, waited until I had walked off, then cut the king's throat from ear to ear. How did he flee? Jumped out a window into the river below. Yorva the Scoyatel were waiting in a boat. It was planned. And you're chasing him because he murdered the king? I was accused of the murder. I need to clear my name. Besides, I looked him in the eye before he escaped. He's a witcher. 
Then some brave Temerian soldiers showed up, piled on me, and knocked me out. <laughs> Save yourselves, good folk! The beast attacks! We better get out there. Someone's casting spells. Oh, shit. Holy moly! What sort of sorceress are you? A lot of good you did! Can't you hear me? Why didn't you help him? He's alive, isn't he? The beast nearly pulled him in the water while you stood staring like a calf at a shit-covered clover. Watch your words. Where's this beast? Ask her. Geralt. Ah, I guess we knew each other. Oh, look here. Birds of a feather. Let's say I've heard of you. Master Witcher, this is foolish. The beast near pulled Sozek into the depths, and you're simply chatting with this damsel. All right. What happened? I came to Flotsam to kill the Cairn. Cairn? The monster that has effectively blocked the port. A moment ago, I had the good fortune to see it in all its splendor, but the local folk scared it away. Good fortune? You hear that, Sozek? That was some good fortune for you. Why is the beast in the port all of a sudden, eh? Summoned by the witch, perchance? To see it in all its splendor. Hell yeah, friends. Get the hell out of here. I'm tired of your whining. Get out of here. Ah, oh, as ever. It's the common folk that get ploughed. Come on, lads! Say ya. I apologize for interrupting, but I am Louis Merce, and I am chief person in charge of all matters related to monster hunting in Flotsam. It is in this capacity that I must inquire if you're willing to attempt to resolve the problem of our so-called Cairn, the beast that now blocks all trade traffic on the river. So, Witcher, are we willing? I usually work alone. I was here first, and I'll not relinquish this contract. My way or the highway, as the locals put it. Fine. Your way it is. You must contact the merchants on the waterfront as regards any rewards. Madame de Tanserville has, I believe, already conducted some preliminary negotiations. That I have. In that case, don't let me keep you. Triss, how long must I wait for you to introduce us? Sheila de Tanserville, advisor to Queen Zulika of Kovir. Kovir is a long way north. True. I had my doubts if the Cairn was worth the journey, but those were dispelled with what it showed today. Here to hunt down some ingredients? Triss Merigold, sharp as ever. You're thinking that... Troll eyes, ghoul venom, virgin's blood, all those disgusting marvels we take from dying species. To throw into the cauldron at Sabbaths, right, Triss? Absolutely. Virgins are a dying breed. Oh my, your sense of humor seems to be intact too. But enough of these pleasantries. Tell me, Geralt, you saw the tentacle. What do you make of it all? The beast must be huge maybe inhabited one of the Pontar's tributaries before, hunting animals. Then it grew for some reason, and hunger drove it to seek fresh pastures. And on the Pontar it found trade barges burgeoning with obese, slow-moving merchants. You're partly correct. Cedric claims the Cairn emerged from the northern swamps approximately one month past. Cedric? An elf. Formerly a Scoia'tael. Strange bird. But he knows quite a bit about the area and its living wonders. I need to look around, find out a few things. Hmm. An investigation. Witcher's rituals, extracting secrets and such. More or less. I'll talk to the merchants about the reward. Pay Cedric a visit and get back to you. 
You'll find me at the inn. I've rented lodgings there, on the upper floor. You know the inn's also a horror house. Thanks for the warning. Huh. <laughs> Interesting. We'd best get to work. So, well, Trish don't have anything. Sheila the Tanserville, friends. Talk to Cedric. So we have Cedric, this person. The Karen talk to the merchants on the waterfront. Okay, so Sheila de Tanzaville, I am going to be honest with you. She is definitely not one of my favorite sorcerers, but she indeed does um, definitely look the way I think she would look. Especially with that tattoo she has on her chest and her stupid little hat. But was not really a supportive um, sorceress when they uh, indeed wanted to do stuff with Siri. They captured Siri. They wanted to marry him off, marry her off to some guy or whatever. I mean, she let the dancer play kind of a small role, but she was just a bitch. She voted against the whole thing at the end of the, the book for Siri to see Geralt one last time before they proceeded to something else. I can't remember, friends. It was very, it was like over a year ago since I read the books. But I know at one point she wanted to uh, rename Siri and <laughs> Siri would take the name Cirilla the Tankerville or something like that. So, yeah, she is a shady bitch. I'm not really sure what her involvement is here. But obviously, I do love the fact that Triss does not seem to like her friends. And that is very good because I don't trust Sheila and I didn't trust her in the books either. She was a shady bitch. So, yeah. Was there anybody else to talk to over here? This guy's got a blue thing. Hey. Whitey, why'd your hair go white? Excuse me. Ever seen the river monster, the Karen? I have, but I'm not the talkative kind. Are you the kind that scares easily? Huge beast. Stirs the water with its tentacles like a water wheel. Dead fish all around it. Must be venomous. Must be venomous? Well, obviously. Did you see the damn thing? Can we go in here? Yeah, but Sheila the Tanserville, friends, I, I, I don't know. The Tanserville, the Tankerville, I mean, whatever you want to call her, I guess it's like tomato, tomato, or whatever, but... I don't know, she's here for... What reason, friends? Something... Shady, I'm guessing. Who knows, though? Anything with sorceresses, they always do something... Um, for a reason, they don't just... They don't just not do stuff for a reason. It's hard to explain, but they always do something for ultimatum, some kind of motive. Kinda. What the hell's up here? Is this nothing? Half expecting to come in here and find clues about this uh, river beast or whatever the hell's going on here. So this is very interesting. We have a river beast here now. Now, now it's starting to feel very damn witcherly, friends. I like it. So we're going to have this big contract on this big ass uh, sea beast or river monster or whatever the hell it is. And it's going to be quite interesting. We're going to need to jump into the journal, actually. So the cave in a matter of price. Sorceresses never do anything out of the kindness of their hearts. Just like I was saying, friends, for the simple reason that they have stones instead of hearts, Sheila said she had enough of talking and wouldn't lift a finger against the monster until a price of the contract was set. The artless witcher would never have thought to do this that way, but since a sorceress left in her finger can be mighty helpful in any situation, particularly one that involved killing huge monsters, our hero went to haggle with merchants at the harbor. And then we have the cavern here. The cavern. What about the monstrosity of Flossum? Well, Geralt heard that the beast had attacked a man on the pier. Driven by professional curiosity, he went to investigate. Indeed, it was, as the people said, the unlucky victim lay on the pier, a row crowd surrounding him, and was commenting on the events. Among the onlookers stood a sorcerer, Sheila de Tanserville. The Witcher and sorceress exchanged. But a few words before she asked Geralt for help hunting down the dangerous beast. First, they needed to identify the species. An elf named Cedric was said to be the most knowledgeable about the local wildlife. So interesting. I want to read about... Thank you for not clicking a new person. So I want to read about Sheila de Tanzerville, friends. 
I know from experience that magicians are not above lusting for power. Among sources alone, there are many whose ambition leads them. Pool strings, moving kings, and other mighty forces of this world. To command the elements in spectacular fashion, summon genies, bend fate, dictate royal proclamations, or at least to force others to eat chicken with cutlery. That is why magicians such as Sheila de Tanserville, known as the Covier Loner, so apart from the other Lady Sheila, was known to interfere in politics, at least not visibly. Instead, dedicating her days to research strict calm and collective. Unlike other sorceresses, she did not display her feminine charm, nor did she flirt with men, jiggling her posterior before them at every occasion. Though I must remain true to myself here, the world would undeniably be much more poor place without typical sorceresses. The reason for Sheila de Tanso's presence in a backwater town like Flotsam was initially a mystery, yet it quickly became clear that she had came there because of the Karen, a river monster, for sorcerers gladly used the organs of exotic creatures as ingredients for magical preparations, and Sheila was no exception. So that's interesting enough. That is probably what she wants. It is very interesting that she is here, friends. Very, like I said, if she's gonna have... No, working my ass off like a stagecoach. She probably has an ultimatum, or uh, yeah, ultimatum, whatever it is. I could only imagine. So where are we supposed to be going here? There is something about a price over here. Oh, one of the merchants over there. Interesting. What's this green dot here? White-haired one. I have an offer for you. Okay. Greetings, white-haired one. I could do with your help. You see... I'm looking for a certain formula. I'm no herbalist. I know who you are. I'll be straight. Find the formula and you'll earn a sizable pouch of orans. Okay. Sure, I guess. Sounds good. What do you want me to do? The formula is in the hands of a certain shopkeeper. Can't go and see him yourself? He deals in incense. One type is particularly... Popular. I think what he sells is harmful, yet I need the formula to prove it. The scoundrel knows that and is very cautious. Yet I assume you, as a witcher, have your ways? I'll see what I can do. So what is this guy? Get the recipe for the poisonous incense? This is shady, friends. Let's look at this. Do you like the scent of incense? Then listen, Geralt met a scholar at the harbor. The man claimed... That one of the local shopkeepers sold incense producing poisonous smoke. He could not prove the murderous trade without producing a recipe for the incense. Geralt promised to get the man a recipe for a tidy sum of orans. Interesting enough, friends. So, hold on here. We need to mark the Kavrim thing again. Which one were we on? A matter of price. Because that's right over here. Cool, I like the uh, new quest updater thing. It's pretty interesting. Boris, said this one. Merchant. What do you want? Heard you have a problem. Ah, if only we had just one. Highways washed out, forests full of bandits, a river beast blocks the port, and tolls are to rise. Can't help with the tolls, but the monster's a possibility. A sorceress said the same. But we've yet to see any results. She's asked me to work with her. And who's to pay your wage? That's what I'm here to discuss. The sorceress was to manage a loan. You can split that reward if you wish. <laughs> Double the fee and I'm in? Hell yeah! Where's our advance? Hmm. I think doubling the fee would be better here, huh? Got there's two of us? Well, we're managing it together now. So as I see it, you should double the reward. <laughs> you jest. <laughs> Mind tricks. Hell yeah. You'll double what you offered Lady de Tanzerville, because that's what the contract's worth. So be it. 
I assume you to be professionals and worth every last copper paid to you. It's a deal. Now tell me what you know about the beast. You're the Witcher, damn it! I've no knowledge of these things. Who could tell me more? That plowing elf, Cedric, most probably. He's supposed to know all about monsters. Where can I find him? In the village, outside the walls. Now leave me be. It's true what they say. A matter of price is completed. Hell yeah, friends. So we still need to talk to the Cedric person. Interesting enough. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and save here. We honestly have... We have a lot of reading to do, friends. Since I clicked on Margo, let's go ahead and read it. Margo, a proprietor of the brothel, was a hard business businesswoman, yet she shepherded her flock of girls with almost motherly care. We need to catch up on these friends because we are very far behind. And not only that, we need to go ahead and read the books that we have. Though so I'm going to try to save the books for the time we get over to wherever that Einar Gausel person is. We got to play him for dice, but he's also a barber. And he also sells books, so... That should be interesting. I'm actually looking forward to going over there to see what we can do with Geralt's hair. If he is indeed a barber, I wonder if we can actually change Geralt's hairstyle, friends? That should be pretty cool. But anyways, I'm out of here. Take it easy. Have a good one. Until next time, as always, stay safe out there. See y'all next time.